Hi everyone, I'd like to share an article that I read yesterday, really interesting on the overlap between narcissism and cocaine addiction. And it's interesting when we look at literature on narcissistic personality disorder. Now, of course, all of us have narcissistic traits to a certain extent. We need that to function. However, here I'm talking more about the narcissistic personality disorder or personality traits that significantly affect the individual and uh, others around them. Now, interestingly, a lot of uh, narcissistic personality disorder individuals don't really present to psychiatrists because grandiosity is often associated with it. So a lot of the behaviors affect other people and not the individual themselves. They do tend to present to us when there is what's called a narcissistic insult. And this is where the individual can go into quite severe uh, depression um, and in some cases can be associated with uh, quite high rates of aggression or even aggression turned inwards uh, which is associated with um, self-harming behaviors etc having said that i wanted to touch on the overlap between narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder and cocaine addiction interestingly when we look at the literature around the genesis of narcissistic personality disorder or pathological narcissism now of course we know as a trait it's it's revolves around self-centeredness one of the core aspects that has been highlighted is childhood experiences of devaluation and rejection by primary caregivers. So this leads to a state known as reward deficiency state. So the reward deficient state, when we think about reward, dopamine plays a very, very important part. So individuals that experience attachment difficulties, or in this case, rejection or neglect by primary caregivers can enter into this reward deficient state. So think about it as a dopamine dysregulation state. And therefore, many of these individuals can then attempt to fulfill or meet that reward deficient state through maladaptive ways. So in some cases, this could be drugs or other ways. So when we think about individuals with substance use, in this case, cocaine, of course, the cocaine is used to fulfill, to compensate for their reward deficient state through the release of dopamine. Cocaine releases dopamine and of course other neurotransmitters as well, which results in that experience of reward. When we think about narcissism, through the range of behaviors, the addiction to self-esteem, essentially the self-esteem results in the same aspect, which is the release of dopamine. And this behavior, this learned behavior can become addiction, just like in cocaine, the use of cocaine becomes a learned behavior. So the overlap between narcissism and cocaine and cocaine it's an addiction to the substance in narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder it is addiction to self-esteem and the range of behaviors are basically mediators to achieve that particular end and behaviors that arise from this particular reward deficient state the addiction to self-esteem can include behaviors such as manipulation lying excessive need for self-admiration and of course the grandiosity that is associated with it in some cases the lack of empathy i personally also use the term dopamine transfer particularly for narcissistic individuals that are dealing with other people the reason is because when we think about them as a individual with a reward deficient state really dopamine deficient or dopamine dysregulated state essentially all interactions with other individuals will be essentially with the aim of a dopamine transfer which means deriving dopamine from other individuals through a range of behaviors many of them can be maladaptive and what happens as a result is that dopamine is transferred from one individual to the narcissistic individual and the other individual then ends up in a dopamine deficient state whilst the narcissistic individual fulfills their self-esteem so as they go through life the other individual can end up with quite severe depression trauma etc which essentially again is that reward deficient state so when we think when we think about an individual with narcissism as a vessel um, you know and they interact with another vessel the other individual's dopamine is going to be transferred over it's really sucking out that dopamine from that other individual to fulfill their self-esteem it's interesting because when we think about cocaine addiction of cocaine use it's very much about fulfilling that reward deficient states but we know due to sensitization and the nucleus accumbens and reward pathway they often find it very difficult to meet that, that initial high and that's what results in that learned behavior the other interesting thing in the article was that um, diffusion tensor imaging actually showed um, abnormal structural connectivity 
in the frontostriatal areas. And this was interpreted, we know frontostriatal areas play a really important role in cognition, empathy, and of course the, the movement area, the behavior area, uh, but also the reward experiences. Uh, this was interpreted as individuals having a disturbed link between self and reward. Individuals with narcissism due to the early life experiences tend to have quite significant low self-esteem, that reward deficient state from a psychodynamic term labeled as a fragile ego state or a self-ego and therefore very vulnerable. But this defense has kicked in, the narcissistic defense, and is compensated through grandiosity and then learned behaviors to basically create an environment of dopamine transfer from the other individual to the narcissistic individual. I hope that this is sort of given you an interesting perspective on, on narcissism, but also the link between substance use. It probably also explains why many individuals with a narcissistic personality disorder also tend to have a strong um, overlap with substance use disorders. All right, so until next time, take care, stay safe, and have a great holiday season. Bye-bye.